Are you tired of having to alter commercial corset patterns to fit your unique shape? Wouldn't you rather take your exact measurements and apply them to a one and done pattern that fits like a glove? Let me introduce you, my little nuggets, to the custom corset generator. It takes all the math and mystery out of drafting with instructions so easy to follow that even a beginner can use it. And the best part, it's completely free. So why doesn't anyone talk about this pattern? Hey y'all, Jackie here and welcome to Fantastical Follies. Today I'm going to show you how to use the custom corset generator to create an Elizabethan pair of stays fit to your exact measurements. Then I'm going to show you how to translate that pattern from paper to fabric and to fine tune the final mock-up into a perfectly fitting pair of stays. Making the actual stays will be in its own separate video. Once that goes live, I'll link it in the card above my head and in the description below. If you're watching before that, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and hit the little notification bell to get notified when that content gets uploaded. The custom corset generator is available for free on elizabethancostume.net. I've also linked to it in the description below. It gives you all the tools you need to make a pair of Elizabethan stays perfect for your next renaissance fair or that choice historical impression you've been wanting to do. All you gotta do is enter your measurements, click a button, and poof! Customize the instructions. Did that sound like an insurance commercial? So there are a few measurements you need to take to get this to work correctly. The fullest part of your bust, your waist, the length of your waist to your underarm, and how long you want the center front. Filling out the generator is extremely simple. These are the standard measurements you see when you visit the website, not my personal measurements. I didn't want this to be triggering for anyone. All you have to do is fill out all of your specifics. I do really like that they give you a cup size option and it goes beyond the standard A through D. Once you've filled out all of your stuff, all you've got to do is click Generate Your Corset Pattern. All you need to make your pattern from here is a paper, a straight ruler, and a pencil. Bonus points for a French curve if you've got one. At first glance, it's really confusing, but I find these instructions to be very straightforward. Just read through them and take it one step at a time and you'll be fine. Now for the fun part. Drafting. First, mark the center front by drawing a vertical line on the right side of the paper. Then at the top, make a dotted line from your center front outward to the specified measurement. This is the bust line. Next, measure out from that point and the specified measurement down and mark point A. At the end of your bust line, measure down and mark point B. It was at this point I thought I should actually mark everything so future me wouldn't get confused. For point C, measure again from the center front out along the bust line and mark. This is going to be the point where the stays curve down for the underarm. Now, following the diagram they give you, draw out a curved line from point B down to point A and then up to point C. This, my friends, is the top of your stays. I highly suggest using a pencil for this. I'm using a friction pen because I wanted it to be visible on camera and I'm gonna regret it later. If you have it handy, you can then use a French curve to smooth out your lines, but you can freestyle it too if you don't. Onto the bottom of the stays. From point A, draw a dotted line down to the specified measurement, which is your underarm to waist length. This is going to be the shortest point of your stays. Draw another dotted line out from this point from the center front to the specified width and label this point D. I'm a little confused by this step because in the instructions, point D is below the line, but then it says to measure zero inches down from the line. I still don't get that bit. Now draw a line from point B to point D. This is your center back. Now to make the bottom curve. Measure again from the center front out to point E. Then measure over and up for point F. From F, measure over and up once again for point G. Finally, to make the bottom point, from the edge of your center front line, measure over and mark point H. Now it's time to connect the dots. La, 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 la. As you can see, my line is a little wonky. I do think that point D needed to be lower down to get the right curve. We'll see in the mock-up process whether I end up wanting to lengthen the center back or not. Then, once again, you can use a French curve to smooth out the lines. I always like to do this in a different color if I can so I know which is the good line. Congratulations! You now have a custom corset pattern. Woohoo! Wasn't that easy? 
Let me know in the comments below whether you like drafting or you're intimidated by it. I'm always curious whether people get tripped up on the math like I do, <laughs> which is why I love this pattern. No math. Alrighty friends, here's our drafted pattern. Now in theory, this should be enough to make your pair of stays. However, there are three different options that you can do to make different styles of stays depending on your preferences. The first is just like that one. The second one is just like that one, but with tabs. And the third one is just like that one, but with fully boned tabs. So originally I wasn't going to put tabs on this because I plan to wear it as my Adelagia top and I was thinking with the tabs, it would kind of get in the way of the waist ties of my Adelagia trousers. However, logically, the amount of time I'm going to be wearing these stays with the Adelagia pants together is a lot less than I'm going to be wearing the trousers as modern pants and the stays as something else. And if I put boned tabs into this pair of stays, then I can actually use this as my pair of Elizabethan stays. The tabs do serve a purpose, especially if they're boned. They help support the body and the farthingale that might go on over top of it. And this way I have a much more versatile, much more multitasking pair of stays. But before I go draw the tabs and the straps on, I want to test and make sure that this is going to fit me. Because no matter how precisely we've drafted this to our measurements, there is no guarantee that it is going to fit perfectly right off of the paper. Every body is different. It squishes in different places. It's larger or smaller in different places. You really need to do a mock-up. You always need to do a mock-up with stays. I will fight you on that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take this unmodified drafted pattern, slap it on some muslin, add some lacing strips on the back. Well, slap me and call me Susie. I had this grand idea that I was going to walk you through how I fit this, but uh, it actually fits. I mean, we're gonna have to do some tweaking once it's boned, but I think it works. Let me do a spin. I think we're good to go. Let's, uh, let's get down and draft out the tabs. One small complaint I had about this website is that I found it very difficult to find the instructions on how to draft the straps. Basically, after you've generated all of your information, if you scroll all the way down to making a corset from this pattern, click on that. It'll take you to the page where you can pick the different kind of corset you want to make. At the very top, there's a link that says a pattern. Click on that and if you scroll about halfway down the page, that's where the instructions are for drawing the straps. Kind of a weird spot and it took me <laughs> several tries to find it, so I wanted you to be aware if you're looking for it, that's where it is. I traced my pattern onto another sheet of paper to draft out the tabs and straps. I want to keep both versions of my draft in case I ever want to go back to the tabless version. This measurement is standard for all. So starting at point D, the back of your stays, measure down three inches and make a mark. Continue following the bottom curve of your stays, measuring three inches down and marking every few inches. Stop when you're four inches away from the center front. From that point, draw a straight line up to the bottom of your stays. Do the same to your center back. Then from there, draw a line either with your French curve or by hand to mark the bottom of the tabs, which is parallel to the bottom of your stays. Divide this into four equal tabs. No, Jackie, four equal tabs. Four, equal. Oh, for the love of Pete, learn to do math. This is why you use a pencil, folks. Here, I deviate from the pattern for the straps. The instructions are to measure three inches in from the center front and the center back and draw a one inch wide, five inch tall strip on both sides. Five inches tall? That sounds like some weird little dude. You must be five inches tall to ride this ride. No! Five inches long. That's what I meant. Then you're supposed to have someone help you in the mock-up process by pinching and pinning them in the center of your shoulder. I don't think this is logical. So after I started measuring it out, I decided to just draw one 10 inch strip on the back and that way I could bring it over and pin it where I need it to be.
Now we're going to draw on the boning channels following the diagram on the website. Note that the boning channels and the tab stays that I'm doing here are different from the other two. So if you're doing the no tabbed or unboned tabbed versions, your boning channels are going to look completely different to mine. I'm also deviating slightly from the pattern. First, the center back only has one set of boning, but I'm opting to have a strip of boning on either side of my eyelets for extra support. These stays essentially have one piece of boning on either side of each tab slit, and the front is completely boned with a busk in the center. I'm opting not to use the busk so I can wash it, but if you're going for a historically adequate version of these stays, you'll need to do the busk. It'll give you added support. One thing of note is that the pattern doesn't really accommodate any space around the tabs for seam allowance for the binding, so I'm drawing my boning channels approximately an eighth of an inch on each side to give me some room. Best practice for doing this is to make sure you scribble in your no-go zones so you can tell at a glance what's a boning channel and what's not. Also, use a pencil for when you inevitably screw up. I'm also adding an additional strip along the back. If you want a detailed explanation about how to draw custom boning channels, I have a whole video about it, and I've linked it in the description below. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some fabric onto the bottom of this initial mock-up and use it as the lining for my boned mock-up. First, I remove the excess seam allowance on the tops and the bottoms. Then, after ironing out all the wrinkles, I sewed on a strip of fabric to the bottom of my stays to serve as my tabs. So this isn't the ideal fabric for this project. I really wanted to use some cotton canvas. However, I can't find it. I could spend an hour sifting through the pit of despair. Where am I? The pit of despair. Trying to find my extra fabric, or I could actually spend an hour working on this, so I opted to use some heavyweight muslin instead of the cotton canvas. It's all good. Of all the wearable mock-ups to potentially use the wrong fabric for, this one is probably okay. <laughs> All right, let's get those boning channels traced on. One hour later. Notice I did not sew the last two boning channels. I'm going to save myself some time by utilizing my boned lacing strips instead. Look what I did last night. Adding boning is the perfect thing to do while you're sitting around watching TV if you need to have something to do with your hands. 
at least the preliminary boning, not necessarily the real boning because then you have to be Sandy McSanderson and you don't want to do that inside. Now, one thing you also may notice is that there are no straps on this guy. When I was trying to cut this out of my muslin, I didn't have a place where I could cut out both strips for the straps continuously. I had already been thinking about making the straps separate from the stays to add to my adjustability. And I also feel like one inch is a little too narrow for someone who's built like me. I decided to just cut it off and I'm gonna fiddle with that a little bit after I get the fit of these set and ready. Another thing you might notice is that the boning is sticking out in weird places. I like to add a little extra length in my boning during the mock-up process so that in case I have to change something, I don't have to cut a whole bunch of new boning strips. If you've watched my 1640s stays video that I put out last fall, you will understand why. Let's just say it's a pain in the ass. What I'm gonna do now is schlep on my boning channels and put this on and wear it around for a little bit and see if we've got any issues. Firstly, sorry about the state of my bookshelf. I know it's been a hot mess now for a while. Um, it's a casualty of busy season. Hopefully soon we'll get this back up and fixed, but in the meantime, sorry about the mess. The first thing I'd like to say is that these are the best fitting stays as a wearable mock-up that I've ever done. I do need to make a few subtle changes, but for the most part, I could live with these as is without any modifications. However, there are two major things that I would like to tweak. As you can see here, there's very little wrinkling happening, just a little bit in the parts where there isn't any boning. Now I'm gonna hold off on changing that because that might be due to the fabric that I'm using. It might not be perfectly on grain. It might have something to do with where it's laying on my body. And that is going to be a final change I need to make with the fashion fabric sewn all together. So the first issue, as you can see here, is that it closes completely in the back. It least at the top. I need at least a two inch gap in these. Right now I'm sort of at my bloatiest because I've been eating a crap ton of salty barbecue and I'm really stressed. So that it closes completely as is right now tells me that when busy season is over and I'm eating healthier, it's gonna be too big. So the first thing I'm going to do is take it in a little bit. I have a very narrow back and I have a lot larger in the front. I am going to take it in in the side back and kind of almost to the center back by an inch on each side. I am toying with the idea of maybe tapering the top a little bit so that I lose more width at the top of the stays and less width at the bottom where it is actually a decent sized gap. The other issue is something that I see in general with my particular body in almost every pair of stays I've ever made, and that is that there's not enough support, particularly here on this side, like I'm kind of coming up and out over the top of the stays, and that is not good. I do not feel like I am supported, and I should be because I'm fully boned here. It will improve once I have strappage here, but I still think that I need a little bit more side support. Before I add to the side of the stays, however, I am going to take it in first. With stay making and corset making, every tiny little change affects in a big way. So I wanna make sure I've got the back portion fitting the way I want before I start fiddling with this because it might change as this gets smaller, I might have more support or I might have less support. Pro tip, if you're gonna do Lacing strips, don't use cheap acrylic yarn to lace it up. This stuff gets tangled and frays and breaks. Save yourself the headache and use cotton cord. Okay, bye. Since this section is already conveniently tapered, I'm going to go ahead and put it in a dart here to take in the back of my stays. I'm going to start by measuring a half an inch at the straight bit of the triangle and taper it to a point about five inches down. The straight portion next to it is also going to get a bit of a nip. This one's a little easier. I just measured a half an inch in the center and took in the entire portion all the way down. After trying on, I decided it needed to be just a little smaller, so I ended up taking the dart in by a full inch. 
So I wore them last night for an hour or so while I was working on another project, which involved me crawling around the floor drafting another project. And all in all, these are really comfortable. I think they're as comfortable, if not maybe a little more comfortable than my mullet stays. That's a good thing. I added the straps just a minute ago and I do feel like I get a little bit more support. This side looks perfectly fine, but I am sort of still spilling over on this side. So I'm just gonna take it up about half of an inch and I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I made a little mark where I wanna start my grading and in a minute I'll show you how I adjust for that. But otherwise, I think we're good to go. If you made it this far, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to hang out with me today. I appreciate each and every one of you. This has been something I've been really intimidated about trying and I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to try it and show you how easy it actually is. I'm so pleased with the way that this has turned out. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button so the algorithm knows that this is content that you wanna watch. If you'd like to further support my channel, you can check out my Kofi account. I've got lots of fun supplemental content going up over there. If you have the means, you can also buy me a coffee by leaving me a one-time tip. All the proceeds from that go to helping me make more content like this. As a further incentive, I am running a little contest between now and November 3rd. For every single person who donates, you will be entered in a drawing to win a personalized custom historical accessory made by yours truly. You'll get to pick which kind of accessory you want as well as get a say in the style, the fabrics, and what might or might not be embroidered on it. Let's get down on the floor and finish drafting this guy. To take in the straight portion of the stays, I measured the center of the space and drew a line. Then I drew another line a quarter of an inch on either side and cut in the center. Then it was just a matter of cutting off one side and tapering the line on the other. This takes in a full half inch on each side of the stays. The slanted part is a little trickier. I picked a straight portion of the triangle to start and measured up an inch. Then I measured five inches down. This will be the bottom of the dart. I then drew a slanted line from each mark down to the dart bottom. Then I spent several minutes creasing, trying to make the dart look like the one I did on the fabric, but the paper was being a jerk, so I lost my patience and just cut down the center. I folded my excess out of the way and brought the dart together. Then I cut up my tab to spread out the excess curve. This is going to make my tab just a little wider, but that's okay. I added a bit of extra paper to the slit and taped it down. Then I needed to smooth out the top portion of the dart. It's a simple fix, just follow the line of the stays down and taper it to nothing on the other side of your changes. Now to heighten the side bust. We're going to start with a mark I made on the actual mock-up. I measured from my line to the center front mark. Then I marked the same distance on my pattern. I added a scrap piece of paper and then began measuring up by a half an inch all along the bust line. Note that I'll be giving myself a little extra seam allowance on this part on the actual stays in case I need to go up a little bit more. From here, I traced the line by eye, matching it up with the top of the stays and tapering it to nothing slightly beyond my underarm mark. You could faff about with a French curve if you wanted, but I opted not to. I'm also extending the boning up to the top of the stays as I think that will give me a little more support. And that's where I'm gonna leave you for today. All in all, this went way smoother than I anticipated. Let me know in the comments if you're inspired to try this. I'm super excited to start the actual stays, which I just decided last night are going to have gold work embroidery on them. My new neighbors have a dog. It will not stop barking. So I'm sorry if you can hear barking, but I cannot stop every time it barks or I will lose my mind. And <sighs> thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to watch more fun corset content, you can check out this video here where I walk you step-by-step step how to draw your own bony channels using as many double entendres as humanly possible without losing my proverbial monetization. Catch y'all later.